Good evening. This is Pastor David out of Jackson Park, Hawaii. I apologize that I'm late today, but I had a wonderful time today. I had a breakfast for pastors and a lunch for pastors at the Wisconsin Athletic Club. And it was an all-day event, meeting different pastors from all over. And uh, more or less, the pastors from the outside came in and, and, and tried to give us... Um, uh, that extra elbow shot, you know what I'm saying, to really continue to encourage us to to stay on the battlefield, uh, preaching the word of God in season and out of season through the Holy Spirit that gives us understanding and the Holy Spirit that gives us power. It was a wonderful time. I had probably the best time I've had in a long time uh, to be around other Christian brothers, other pastors from different walks of life, different denominations, but we all came together worshiping and praising our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's how it's going to be when we get to heaven. I don't care if you're Methodist, Presbyterian, um, Baptist, uh, but when you ex are a servant for Jesus Christ and you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then we're in the, the family of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's the true gospel, believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I won't be long this evening, but I just wanted to be long enough to let you know that salvation is still for you. Amen. Say hallelujah. Happy Friday. Usually I'll be in the church garden, but maybe next Friday, if it's the Lord's will, I can take some snapshots. Tomorrow I'll be putting in the photos that I took today at the uh, pastor's uh, breakfast and, and, and dinner. Uh, and uh, I'll be doing that on tomorrow if it's the Lord's will. And maybe a, uh, a snapshot of uh, one of the pastors that was giving us uh, uh, some insight. Okay? So tonight, I want you to really check yourself right now. Today is Friday. And happy Friday. I want you to go to a Bible preaching church that preaches the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You put it off too long. It's time to get back into the family of God. You might say, Pastor, I backslid. It's time for you to come back. Time for you to come back. God is waiting on you. His arms are oh, stretched out open wide, saying, come home with his arms open wide to bring you back home, to hold you, to nurture you, and to love you with an everlasting love. Let you let you see where I'm at. Just to let you see where I'm at. People are walking around. Beautiful today. Beautiful. It's been chilly the last few days, but looks like we're back up in the 80s, I think, you know? Look at those over there. Hey, man. Let you see what the Lord is showing. Did he show you? Did you see it? Again, this is Pastor David Jackson Park, and we're going to talk about four things. I won't be long today, but I just want you to get your Bible right now. That pencil. You got to get a crayon, get a crayon, and that piece of paper, that brown paper bag. I want to share something with you that the Lord put on my heart. Amen. We're talking about four things God cannot do. There's four things God cannot do, and he won't do. You may say, God, he can do anything. Yes, he can. But there's four things that God cannot do. Let's look at number one. God cannot tolerate evil. Did you hear what I just said? Tolerate. In this tolerance age that we live in, when people do not like to draw sharp lines between right and wrong, God speaks plainly. He tells us that all wrongdoers or wrongdoing is sin. 1 John 5, 17 says, Every sin is an offense to God. Personal sins, natural sins, greed or oppression, lack of love of a or disobedience. If we wish to live forever with God, we must be pure and holy as He is. Habakkuk 1, 13 makes it very clear. You are of a pure eye and cannot look on wickedness. See, when you're saved, you don't want to do evil. 
You don't want to do wickedness no more. You see people, as, as a pastor, me being saved by the blood of Jesus. And when Jesus saved me and I look at other people, you see what they're doing. All you can do is pray for them. Because you know what? That used to be Pastor Day. And that might have been you too. In some way. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So number one. God cannot tolerate evil. Every sin. Is an offense to God. I don't care if it's personal sins for yourself. Or national sins because everybody else is doing it. You want to join into it because everybody else is doing it. That's national sin. Just because the world say it's okay to do that. Does not mean the Lord said it's okay. Amen. Because all those people following along with the Joneses. And following along with the world. Changing the laws and rules. Saying it's okay. It doesn't mean it's okay in God's standard. Amen. And in God's way. Greed. A lot of people sin because they greed. Some people do it just to do it. Because you oppressed other people by not only oppressing other people, you oppress your kids because you show them lack of love. You show them it's okay to be disobedient. And when you don't live by God's rules, you're, being, you're disobedient. You're doing what you feel like you want to do to make you happy. And that's selfishness. God does not want you to be selfish. We must be pure and holy as Jesus is. Because when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and now you have to repent and be generally when you repent from your sins. See, there's a lot of people out there that think they saved, but they never have repented. Did you hear what Pastor Dave says? Repentance means ask Jesus Christ to forgive you for your sins, spell it out, and turn away from that sin and walk toward Jesus in the other direction. That's what it is, walking toward Jesus in his direction, turning your back on those things that the world has caused you to have a stronghold or a toehold or a foothold over your life. Jesus should be first in everything. And then you need to let go of that other stuff, that sinful stuff that Satan has brainwashed you and tricked you into saying, you got to have this, you got to have that. You need to make a conscious decision to repent from your heart, turn away from your sins, and give yourself totally to Jesus Christ. Number two, God cannot accept any solution except the saving work of his son, Jesus Christ. There's only one solution. God the Father cannot accept any other solution except the saving work of his son, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ paid it all at the cross of Calvary for your sins. Jesus Christ shed his precious godly blood for your sins. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for your sins. Jesus Christ was buried in the tomb for you and your sins. And Father God accepted the sacrifice that his only begotten son made because he raised Jesus up from the dead on the third day. And Jesus ascended into heaven and sits at the right side of the Father. Even as I speak to you right now. All power, all honor, all glory and all majesty was given to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given back to him by Father God. Because Jesus Christ satisfied that sin debt by being the second Adam for the Father. And that's why you and I have right to be saved today. Just by accepting Jesus Christ from our hearts, repenting from our sins, turning toward Jesus for salvation. Repent, call out your sins and label them as much as you can remember, and the Holy Spirit will bring it to, to fruition that those sins that you don't remember, that the Holy Spirit will intercede for you and pray with you and pray for you as you turn away from your sins and turn toward Jesus to forgive you for your sins and to ask Him to save you and clean you up and to change you with the, the right heart, the clean heart, the right mind, the right soul. And continue to strengthen your spirit to be in control. Does that make sense? The letting the spirit of God speak to the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. It's going to guide you, shape you, and mold you. That Holy Spirit is not going to abandon you. 
He's going to stick with you closer than a brother. Amen. And that's what you have to do. Trust not in yourself, but to trust in the deity of Jesus Christ. Because he's the only one that can save you. Amen. Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. The ancient Romans were great road builders. And in those days, they were saying, all roads lead to Rome. Many people that think that all religion leads to God. Not so. Jesus is the only way. There's a lot of religions out there. I'm just going to name a few. Jehovah Witnesses. Latter day Saints. They don't believe in the deity of Christ. They don't believe that Jesus Christ died. And the Muslims, they don't believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. They believe he's a prophet. Some believe that he's Michael the Archangel. But they don't believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. They say there's many ways to be saved. Catholic priests say they can only forgive you for your sins. But that Catholic priest did not die on the cross. That Catholic priest did not give his life. Only Jesus Christ gave his life for you and I. And that satisfied the debt that he, we have to pay to the world. And that's only Jesus Christ satisfied God's debt by shedding his blood at the cross. By him dying on the cross, being buried in the tomb. And God shows us how much he loves us by raising Jesus Christ up from the dead on the third day. So the first Adam failed. But the second Adam gave us eternal life. Through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone is that second Adam. Amen. So let me go back to number two. God cannot accept any solution except the saving work of his son, Jesus Christ. Again, the ancient Rome were great road builders. And in those days, they were saying all roads lead to Rome. Many people think that all religion leads to God. Not so. Jesus is the only way to God. 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all. Others think that if we do the best we can, we will get to heaven. But good works and vicarious li lives or living are not enough to pay for the guilt of sin. Only the death of Jesus on the cross pays for your sins. John 14, 6 says this and write this down. I am the way. That's Jesus. The truth. That's Jesus. And the life. That's Jesus. No one comes to the Father except through me, which is Jesus. There's only one way. There's only one way to be saved. His name is Jesus. God cannot reject anyone who comes in the name of Jesus. Did you hear what I just said? You come, you repent, and ask for forgiveness for all your sins through Jesus Christ. Thanking Father God for the gift he's given you that you can repent. And that's only through his only begotten son. Now you got to repent. You got to call out all your sins. And then you ask Jesus to come into your heart. Then you ask Jesus to change you from the inside out. You ask Jesus to change you, mold you, and shape you. To be that man you need to be for him. To be that young woman you need to be. To be that woman you need to be. And also that young man. He's called you to be. God does not punish twice. You mean that Pastor Dave repeat that again? God does not punish twice. No one can bear the punishment of sin except Jesus. And he bore it all. When Jesus died on that cross, or before he died, all your past sins, young man, all that past future sins young lady and all those future sins all of you in the world today that's breathing went into Jesus Christ at that cross all your past present and future sins you've ever committed was imputed to Jesus at that cross 
And when he died on that cross and he said, it is finished. And Jesus Christ raised him from the dead. He's the only one that can save you because he died for you. He took your place. He took my place at that cross over 2,000 years ago. God does not punish sin twice. No one can bear the punishment for sin except Jesus. And he bore it all. If we accept the sacrifices of Jesus for your sins, you will never be condemned. Romans 8 1 says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 1. Also John chapter 6 verse 37 and verse 40 says the one who came to me his name is Jesus will by no means cast out. This is the will of the father who sent me that everyone who sees the son and believe in him Jesus may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last days that's St. John's chapter 6 verse 37 and 40 and the fourth thing we'll look at in closing this evening God cannot take second place in your life if you love your wife more than Jesus and if you love going to Potawatomi, bingo, or gambling, playing scratch-offs, still smoking that dope, still drinking that VOS, still cussing and lying and conniving, still committing adultery, still lying and still doing those 17 bad feuds in Galatians chapter 5. God cannot take second place in your life being a Christian is more than a one time saying that one believe in Jesus James 2.26 says faith without works is dead out of the gratitude for God's great salvation the Christian will obey God in all things the Christian will obey God in all fight against sin the Christian will obey God in all and love his neighbor and live a thankful and holy life. Living in such a way leads to true joy and true fulfillment in God's plan for you. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Hebrews 12, 14. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God cannot deny himself Therefore, these truths are absolutely certain. Make certain that they apply to you. Number one, God cannot tolerate evil. Number two, God cannot accept any solution except the saving work of his son Jesus. Number three, God cannot reject anyone who comes in the name of Jesus. And number four, God cannot take second place in your life. You might say, Pastor Dave, I want to take that step to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm tired of being tired, but I need to have a change in my life. And I come to the realization to know that only Jesus can change me. Well, if you're that person... I want you to turn around right now from what you were getting ready to do. But doing that, walking into sin, probably going to get that six pack or that VOS or probably going to buy that dime bag of weed or that crystal meth. I want you to turn from it right now. And I want you to repeat and say, Lord Jesus, 
and then repent all your sins. Tell him all the sins that you can remember that you want him to forgive you for. If you was a liar or a backbiter or a child uh, molester, or hopefully, uh, and, and if you was a wife beater, you need to come to him with your whole heart right now. Not hopefully, but you need to come right now and say, Lord, I'm tired of sinning. I'm tired of doing drugs. And whatever that situation, whatever your sin or sins are, you know what they are. You need to say, Lord, I need you to forgive me right now. I need for you to change me from doing those things. It's wrong for me to do those things. And I need you to change me from the inside out like you did, Pastor Day. Then you need to say right now, Lord Jesus. I pray from the bottom of my heart right now that you truly come into my heart and forgive me for all my sins that I just got through spelling out. And I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, and thank you for all my sins was imputed at that cross over 2,000 years ago. And you paid in full my sin debt by shedding your blood on the cross of Calvary. By you dying on the cross of Calvary saying it is finished. I believe in you, knowing that I'm saved by grace through faith and faith only in you, Lord Jesus. I put my trust and faith in you right now. I'm asking you to change me, shape me, and mold me from the inside out. And seal me right now with that Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of truth. I'm putting my faith in you to change me, to shape me, and mold me that I may be serviced to walk according to the will you have for me before the foundations of this world. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer with me, I want to say welcome to the family of God. But I also want to have prayer for those right now that's struggling, those right now that's going through right now, those right now that's having some serious issues going on. All I need you to do right now is say, Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. I want you to raise your hand right now. Lord Jesus, I ask that you go by the highways and byways. There's somebody out there, Father, right now that needs your help. There's somebody out there, Father, that's caught up in some mess right now. There's somebody out there, Father, that's saying, Lord, I need you to change me. Lord, I need you to heal my mind, heal my body, heal my soul. I need you to bring my marriage back together. I need you to bring my kids back home. I want to start having Bible studies. I want to start having taking them to church with me. I want to have devotions in my family. And I want to start reading your, my, your word. Give me understanding to understand the word through the Holy Spirit to my spirit. And let my spirit right now pray on my behalf. Because my spirit knows those things that I need to pray for. Intercede for me, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you so much for bearing with me today and keeping me in prayer. Had a wonderful time today being around other men of God. And I tell you, it just was so rejuvenating because the guest speaker sat by me this morning. I just had a wonderful conversation with that brother. And I won't share nothing more until tomorrow when I put it all on Facebook. You have a blessed day. And don't forget, today is Friday. I want you to tell somebody and ask somebody to come to church with you. If they little kids, you tell them to come with you. Amen. You drag them to church. You drag them to Sunday school because you're saving that child from growing up to be a carjacker and being something out there getting caught up in the games. Because you know what? It's your responsibility to take your kids, your grandkids to church. They can't tell you no because they 9, 10, 11, and 12. You're in charge not them. Have a wonderful day and be blessed in Jesus and know this that Jesus loves you very much in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah! <clears throat>